Good morning. Welcome to today's webinar. My name is Joshua and I'm going to be your presenter. It's promptly 1130 Eastern time here. We're going to go ahead and get started. I hope everybody can hear me okay. My audio appears to be coming through loud and clear. Um, uh, we're here to talk about uh, payroll paying by direct deposit this morning. So we're here for the next 20 minutes or so. Um, I'm pretty good about keeping, you know, within the time frame. Uh, this, you know, we may take the full 20 minutes, we may not. I will do my best to, you know, wrap it up right at 20 minutes, you know, into the event. Um, and uh, we are recording today's webinar event. So the video for today's event will be listed on our web page, website here under our support center sometime within the next uh, 24 to 48 hours, perhaps sooner. Um, FYI, so when we go into our website, we already have this uh, event recorded in another webinar topic. It might be replaced with the one that we're recording today. Um, but in the meantime, we will, it might be just on an earlier version out here. So if we do something like direct deposit um, and we search there, just want to point out that we have here paying by direct deposit down here, further down the page. Let me get out my highlighter right here, paying by direct deposit, okay? It's kind of good that we're on this page because, again, we're not here to talk about setting up direct deposit. We have a video on setting up direct deposit right here. I'm sure we will record the setting up process here probably sometime later here in 2020 but we are not going to be covering anything to do with the setting up of the direct deposit in our event today. We're simp the assumption is we are already have set it up. We're ready to now process our payroll and pay our folks electronically um, using the direct deposit feature in our payroll system. Finally, a couple things. If you have questions, please type those into the questions uh, portion of the webinar control panel. I'll do my best to keep an eye on those. I'm pretty good at repeating the questions so everybody knows what's being asked. Um, please keep the questions on the topic at hand, meaning paying by direct deposit. Um, finally, all of our, this topic is taken from our P102 workbook, Payroll 102, pages five through nine. So if you have that workbook, you can turn to those pages um, and follow right along. That's the material I'm using for the event today. Or if you don't have the workbooks and you're interested in them purchasing those, you can buy those from the workbooks page on our website. Okay, so the the paying employees via direct deposit or EFT is no different than it is when you're calculating regular payroll. Okay, so here I am at calculate payroll one. I'm entering my pay date and settlement date. My pay period ended like I would for any other pay. In fact, I'm going to be going through the process and showing you how you can do direct deposit employees in combination with employees that receive regular checks. Okay, you don't need to do them in two separate pay runs. They can all be done simultaneously. I've entered a future date here, folks, because I have payroll training data already entered here, and so it won't allow us to create an EFT file for, a, a, for the same date. So I'm just entering a future date here. Just assume this is a, a you know, current pay date. So we're at Calculate Payroll 1. We're going to go ahead and click Next. I can choose which employees that I'm wanting to pay or which I'm not. I don't need to make any changes here. I'm paying everybody simultaneously. I simply go to Next. It shows me my list of my employees, all of those that are receiving checks and being paid via direct deposit. You know, so we're going to say, oh, well, Jimmy this week, you know, he worked 50 hours this past pay period, not 45. So I've made my changes. I go to Next. It allows me to open up and print my reports if I wish. I'm not choosing anything there. Now we're looking at the pages that we're seeing at the top of page five there on our workbooks for creating the EFT transaction file. So just, I guess I kind of overlooked the initial thing there right at the very top, which is um, we strongly encourage you to make backup of your payroll data prior to calculating pay, certainly when using the direct deposit feature. I mean, it's good to be backing up your church windows and the payroll data regularly anyway, but if, you know, it doesn't hurt to do it just beforehand, you know, you can never have too many backups, folks. You know, backing up your data at any point is always a, is a good idea. 
just for your own, you know, peace of mind, essentially, okay? Uh, we're not going to cover that, but it's just advice to do that. So right here, we notice on our Calculate Payroll 6 screen that it says post to payroll. Of course, we want to do that. It's not going to post to our payroll if we don't. We are going checking the box to create an EFT transaction file. That's the main reason why we're here. We are going to print checks for our regular employees, and we do want to transfer it all into accounting. Okay. If for some reason you did not want to create an EFT file, we would simply uncheck that box. But then the assumption is we're printing checks for those employees, everybody. Okay. So we're simply going to click Finish on this. Okay. So it now says posted to employee file successfully. We click OK on that. It then opens up our Create EFT Transaction File Screen 1, and what I'm looking at is right up here in the upper left. It says Create EFT Transaction File. All right, and it's got my two employees that are paid electronically using the direct deposit feature in payroll. And it's asking me, is the stub printed? Okay, well, I haven't printed my stubs. So I am definitely not going to check that those boxes. Okay, if I do, I'm telling the system that I have already printed the stubs and I don't need them when I actually do need them. Okay, so I'm not going to check that box. Also, I am enabling the EFT, all right, to the far right. So all I do now is click Next. It shows the net pay and the transfer number. And then when I click Next, it now opens up a preview of the stubs now for these employees, one of two pages that I can now print to plain paper, okay? So one of the things I want to point out about this is we notice here to the right, you know, where uh, it says to be deposited via electronic transfer. And I'm talking about this terminology right here, okay? So that's what that's telling us. These are not real checks, okay? So I need to make sure I've got plain paper in my printer. Once I do, I would simply go to the print button in the upper left corner and actually print those to paper, okay? So once I've printed them, they're good. I've got copies of them. I can now go to Next. Now I would simply check the box Stub Printed. Okay, I have those stubs to present to those employees. Okay, and then I would simply click Finish. We're on page six now um, of our workbook pages. So it talks about you know the terminology on the stub and EFT file, you know, stubs printed, et cetera, and EFT transaction file has been created, okay? Now it opens up my regular employees where I would print checks for those folks, and I'm just going to kind of breeze through this pretty fast, folks, okay? So here I've entered the starting check number. Again, it's asking me, did I print the checks? No, I didn't, so I would go to next. I would put check stock in my printer, you know, print those checks for those employees and go to next. And again, it's asking me is the, if the check's printed correctly. I wouldn't respond to this until I'd grabbed the checks off the printer and uh, examined them to ensure that they're presentable. So we're going to assume at this point that they are presentable, so we're going to leave it as yes, highlighted checks printed correctly, and click Finish. Okay. So once I click Finish, it now opens up our screenshots that we're seeing on the top of page seven here on our workbooks where it's transferring it into accounting, okay? Again, none of this is any different than it would be normally when we're calculating for employees whether they receive a check or whether they're direct deposit, okay? They still link exactly the same way. Um, they just don't have check numbers, okay? So then we would simply go to transfer in the upper right corner. It then says transferring payroll data to accounting. Dee, 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 dee. It takes a few seconds. Then it asks me, do I want to print a copy of my accounting transfer audit report? That's This is, again, no different than normal. It's entirely up to you. But for time purposes, we're going to click no on that. Okay. So now I've calculated, posted my payroll, and now transferred it into accounting. All right. So the final step now is, you know, we've processed everything in the payroll. We now need to get that EFT file out of our payroll system to then transmit to your bank however they want you to do that, whether you email it to them or walk it in on a 
flash drive or a thumb drive or whether you upload it through a secure link at their website, typically that's the option. You know, most banks will have a portal that you can just upload it in their website, you know, through an account that you have set up with them. But we go to payroll and right down here we go to the copy EFT option at the very bottom. Okay. So here it's showing our July 15th date. It shows all of the previous dates that I have in the year that I have that for. So the Ju July 15th date is the date that I processed. It would be whatever date that you were processing it for. This is just the date I'm using. Now, we have to make sure that we know where that file is being copied to. So we have to make sure it's going to where we want it to, you know, be that we know where it is. Okay. So, you know, A in this case would be like a, you know, floppy disk or something. Whose computer says a floppy disk anymore? So I would click browse on the right and I would choose where I'm, I'm saving that or copying that file to, whether it's documents or a flash drive or my desktop. Um, we're going to choose desktop for the purposes of our webinar, and we simply click OK, and then we simply click copy file. Okay, so it says C users webinars webinar desktop. Name of my computer is or the the user is webinar. So then copy ef copy file, very small file. So it says file successfully copied to, and he shows me my path with the file name. It's eft twenty 0715.dat, okay? So now, when I minimize payroll, right out here is the name of that file. So let me put it over here on the right in my window so folks can see that right here. So now, I can then transmit that file or upload that file to the bank's website in whatever fashion they've, you know, you, you get that information or file to them, okay? Um, so now you're ready basically to transfer this DAT file to the bank, you know, however it is they want you to get that to them. Okay, that's a part, unfortunately, we don't have any control over. Okay, in the middle of page eight there where it talks about right below, above where it says void EFT pays, it's important to understand this is not an encrypted file. Okay, there is not there's typically not really any too much sensitive information in here like social security numbers in here, but there are uh, bank account numbers and, and routing numbers and what have you in it. So it's important that you're aware that it is not an encrypted file. Most banks will have a SSL security encryption or secure socket layer encryption for the, the file that you're uploading to them, but you need to find out from them you know, before you transmit this file. If not, you may need to purchase encryption software um, before transmitting this, okay? But most banks will have secure encryption uh, capability when you upload the file to them, okay? Check with your bank first, okay? Once that's uploaded to them, then basically it's in the bank's hands and they pay your folks on the requested date, specified date, okay? Like I said, it's not terribly difficult to create the EFT file, print the stubs, transfer it into accounting, and then copy the file and upload it, okay? It's just some additional steps, that's it, okay? Page eight talks about voiding EFT files. Of course, you do have the ability to void your EFT files. It does not allow us to create two EFT files for the same pay date. So I can't go in now and create another EFT pay for July 15th or any other date where it is, um, you know, for, for the pay date. So if I did need to do that, I would either need to calculate the pay for a different pay date or I need to ensure that I'm calculating my EFT pay for all of my employees simultaneously, okay, at one time. Okay, so when we go back into our payroll system, if I need to void an EFT pay, it's important again to understand at the bottom, middle of page eight there that it says, when you void it, it's voiding the entire EFT pay for that specific date. It doesn't void my regular checks, it's just those that were calculated using EFT. So I do that by going to payroll, and right here, the option that says void EFT pays, okay? When I click on that, it does bring up all of my pay dates with my employees where they were paid electronically. 
So if I say, oh, I wanted to void my pay for July 15th, I have to choose July 15th from the menu, and then I have to do select all and click void. There is no way, folks, that I can calculate and void for one employee, okay? It voids it for everybody that was paid electronically for, the, for that day, okay? The logic is, is once the file's uploaded to the bank, it's a done deal. You know, they're paid. If there's a problem and one employee's file is rejected for some reason, you know, they close their account or change banks and never told you or something like that, it's not like we can go in and ask the bank to, you know, they, they deal with it, but Church Windows Payroll doesn't have a way to void just the one check. We have to find another way of dealing with that, okay? So if I did want to void it, I would now highlight them and click void. If I just tried to say choose one, so let me see if I can unclear these now. Uh, no, I can't. So if I choose void now, let me close out of that and go back in. So void EFT pays. If I isolate the 15th, I now click void. It says no entry selected to void. I have to select them. So I have these. See, I click on one and it highlights them all. And once I click void, it'll then reverse them and avoid everybody that was paid on that pay date. Okay. Um, again, there's no, can't choose just one single employee to void who was paid electronically. Those with checks, I can, but those that were, were paid electronically, I cannot. Okay, then I'd have to go in and recalculate for all of my EFT or, or uh, direct deposit employees for that day. Okay, so if you have a problem, you have to be able to, you know, again, when the bank accepts, so, so if one was paid and one was not, I would not want to void that. Okay, if for some reason, again, somebody was rejected, I would deal with all of that in accounting if that were the, how I would deal with that problem. Okay, I would find another way of getting the employee whose file was rejected their net pay a different way. Okay, maybe through accounting directly. But then once I click void, it says two entries voided successfully, click OK to continue or cancel to undo. So I could go, oh, no, I don't want to avoid that. And I would cancel out of it and it goes back to being black. Okay. But if I do, I would void it, click OK, and now it says voided entries were processed, were voided that were previously transferred to accounting. Do I want to reverse those? Typically, I would say yes. It's now reaching over into accounting and voiding those two EFT payroll transactions for that date. Okay. Now that, pay, that EFT pay for July 15th no longer exists. But just by way of a reminder, if I go back to void individual pay, my employees that were paid with checks are still there. Okay, so the void only voids the EFT employees, not the regular employees. Okay, so now I would could go back in and recalculate a pay for my regular, you know, for my EFT pay employees as needed. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, and we always advise when voiding it in payroll, typically that you're going to reverse the accounting transactions associated with that as well. Okay? All right, folks. That is our topic for today.